Hi, my name is Xpecial from Team Liquid, and this is my basic champion guide to Bard. Bard is a champion that doesn't have too many uh, offensive abilities, meaning that it's probably not best to go for heavy pen or magic pen runes. So that means on reds, you either want armor or AD. And since I feel like his early game is a bit weak, I prefer AD. That way you can actually start fighting people and just be actually a force in lane. For yellows, I prefer HP as I tend to go armor into Quint and just kind of get my armor from there. So HP yellows. For blues, I usually go some mana regen and some MR depending on the lane. Typically, I get around two mana regen. That way, I can spam spells more and then get like four MR or something like that. But it depends on the lane. And then for quints, I get three armor quints or two armor quints and, a, and an AP quint just for a little bit extra healing and a little extra damage for lane. For masteries, you, go, you just go to the standard support page. 0921, very standard. You want extra move speed. Just some extra tankiness for early game, stuff like that. So, 721, not too much explanation there. Fairly simple. Bard has a couple of skill orders that you can go for. The one that we go for is level 1, I actually get W, the heal. This way, I actually don't get destroyed in lane, which is the big weakness of Bard. He is really weak in lane. So, by getting W early on, I pretty much run into lane, drop a couple of the Ws down. They cause 100 mana eaters a lot. And then I go back to base, regen my 300 mana, and then go back to lane with full mana and three uh, health thingies that I can use for my teammates. Uh, so, okay, level 1, get W usually, or you can get Q if you want to fight level 1 or something like that, or you just don't respect the opponent and then you don't think you can get harassed out or something like that. And level 2, I get Q or W, depending on which one I didn't get. At level 3, if I have a hard lane, then I'll get an extra point into W. That way I can get a bit more sustain. Otherwise, I'll just keep getting points in the Q. You want to max Q as it's the only star that does damage, and you want to have extra CC, lower cooldown, all that good stuff that is associated with Q max. And then level 4, um, usually I get uh, points in the Q or W, depending on if I actually want more laning power. But if I'm okay with that, and I want to set up for a gank or something, then I'll go for a point to E. That way I actually have some uh, good sort of ways to get my jungle in for a good gank. I always max Q first. It's the only thing that gives me damage and only thing that can really help with getting kills in lane. So always max Q first. But after that, you can put about two or three points into W total. And then you start maxing E. That way you have more tunnels for team fights and being able to gank more efficiently and stuff like that. And of course, pick up your ultimate whenever you can. Even though it's not the best laning ultimate, it's still useful to have. So Bar being a new champion typically has a lot of builds that people are going for. But the build I prefer the most is the following. So level 1, I get a Stilthy's Edge. That way I have a bit more AP, more mana regen, being able to spam my heal more, all that good stuff. And I prefer that. And I also get... Four HP pots if I have a hard lane, or three HP pots and a mana pot if I think my AD is gonna get harassed mainly. So this build allows me to have a lot of auto attack power and just gives me slightly more power in laning. Another option would be to go for a, sort of a relic shield build, but I don't prefer that as much as you typically are a bit weaker in lane anyways, and you'd rather have a bit more AP that we can actually trade a little bit better. But after that, I usually try to rush my Tyson as soon as possible. I also try to get boots. Uh, or for um, Mobis, that way I can roam a lot more too. Uh, these are all, like, those two items are really, really important for support and what I aim to rush pretty much every single game. After I have these items, I tend to diverge my build into sort of different options. If I want more team fight ability, I will go for sort of CDR with a Frozen Heart, or I would go for an Aegis of the Legion uh, into a locket for a bit more CDR and a little bit of Ord as well. But if I just want more HP and, and stuff, I usually go for a Righteous Glory. That also gives me a pretty good engage and allows me to be able to get in good flanks and helps me set up for my ultimate. So depending on what I need for the game, I have a couple different builds. One build is where I go Frozen Heart just to have more CDR and have an aura there. Another option is Lock It for a, more, against a heavier magic damage team. That way I have a shield and some more extra HP and some MR and stuff in there too. The last option is to go for Righteous Glory to really set up for engages. It allows me to follow up on my ultimate really easily. And out of those, I prefer Righteous Glory the most just because I prefer engaging and I prefer being able to set up for the rest of my abilities. So Bard in solo queue is actually a bit weak. He doesn't have much damage and he's 
not a good laner at all. He also has skill shots, and his ultimate is very team dependent. You can easily help a team win a fight, but you can also help your team throw a fight by ulting at the wrong time. So definitely not my favorite champion to play in solo queue, but he's he's quite fun, especially his tunnels. And um, pretty much anything he can do in solo queue, you can probably do better in solo competitive play or in a ranged team. So he's not my preference in solo queue. I think he's a bit weak. I think he's one of the weakest supports, actually, for solo queue. Definitely not a recommendation from me. The biggest reason why Bard isn't good in solo queue is because he is very weak in lane. And typically in solo queue, games are often won uh, in lane. And if you can win a lane really hard, then you can easily uh, win a game. Also, his unreliability is very hard to communicate with a team. His tunnels as well can get pretty annoying to use. And sometimes you're like, okay, um, you know, don't go in the tunnel. Or like, uh, people don't really know how to use a tunnel effectively. Or you're trying to set for a gank and you need to use a tunnel immediately. People aren't always aware of that. So he's a bit hard to use in solo queue because of the coordination needed. And definitely not my preference in solo queue. Bard's landing is weak. Basically, he has a skill shot on his Q. Only one ability on his Q that does damage. His passive is kind of weak early on and makes it so that he's just not a strong laning champion. There's not enough damage to kill people with and there's not enough pressure or CC to make up for that. Plus, he has two abilities. His E on his ultimate that does no damage and don't provide any utility in a lane. So, that makes him just not a strong laning champion. Okay, because laning on Bard is bit difficult especially early on what you want to do is try to mitigate his early game as much as possible and just kind of survive early game so what i like to do is i like to get w early on that way i can get a lot of my healing things down before the lane phase even starts and like i said earlier i put down a couple of my w's before laning and before so it allows me to go back to base and heal my mana this way i just have extra 300 hp for laning and that's always pretty useful. Also, his laning is very weak in that he doesn't have many damage abilities. He also His CC is also very unreliable and easily dodged. Or you can also miss it pretty easily as well. So it's very important that when you're fighting in lane, that you don't try to go all in with the assumption that you're going to land on your abilities. But try to cap user abilities in a way where even if you miss, you're not going to die for it. So in laning, try to play a bit more conservatively. And if you're trying to go for all in, you need to land your your Q, otherwise it can turn really bad. Or if it's even easier if you just play more uh, passively and try to use your Q to initiate a fight rather than wait for it to um, finish it up in a team fight, as it's actually very easy to miss your Q. And especially if there's no minions or a wall round, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're not gonna get a stun down. And the snare is not, or the slow is not too useful, and you wanna get the stun down pretty much every single time. So in lane, typically chimes will spawn all over the place, some near you and some more far away. One thing about charms is that they give you a little bit more bonus move speed. So one, you can stack them up. You can get like a, you can stack up to five of them, and you can get a bunch of move speed. Uh, helps for you to get charms that are kind of far away. But one thing about them for lading is that they give you a sizable chunk of mana. And when you're spamming spells as much as you should be, you're gonna run out of mana really quickly. So running around and grabbing some charms in between the waves can be very useful. And it helps you to be just sustain your mana as you're probably gonna not win lanes too well and you're typically gonna run a mana a lot. So grabbing chimes whenever you can, but again, you don't wanna leave your teammates in a 1v2 and just completely ditch them. But at the same time, you need to keep track of your own mana and actually have mana for a fight. Bard is very hard to play in teamfights. He has a lot of abilities that can be used in many different ways. So the easiest thing to do is obviously for W, you wanna heal. Somebody that's trying to run away, let them get an escape in. Generally, you can't really charge up the heal for a team fight. It's just way too difficult. His E is something that you kind of want to use to help people escape or to help chase. Generally, in a team fight, that's not going to be your first priority. So one other thing is his Q. You generally want to hit that on the front line. It's very hard to hit on the back line. And then his ultimate is the most difficult to use. You generally want to use that on, your, on their back line and to prevent their escape or to stop them from doing damage, but you don't want to use it when your team is trying to dive in at them unless you can sort of prevent your team from dying in that process as generally, if your team is jumping on them and they're flashing forward and whatnot and you kind of zone as everybody in place, they're just going to flash away and, and just be, basically plan out their escape route. And especially if you have someone like Zed or any other assassin, they're going to be very mad at you if you ult them as they're trying to kill somebody. My first tip for Bard is to use your magical journey to get to lanes faster. 
So one thing you can do with Magical Journey is that you can pretty much hug a wall in your base and be able to just go all the way from your fountain to pretty much your inhibitor just through one tunnel. And that just cuts off time from you trying to roam or trying to get back to lane early and saves time just in general. So it's a good, good thing to use and your teammates can jump on it as well and it's just a lot of fun. Thanks for watching this Champion Guide of Bard. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at LiquidXSpecial and check out my other videos here at LogClass.com. Thanks, guys.